All right, so now we got four methods already, two accessors and two mutators. And I would like to declare, um, I would like to define two more, okay? One is an overloaded version for the set products. You can see the current version of the set products, we only, we are simply just passing as arguments or as parameter, uh, just the product objects. More specifically, we are passing the address of some products objects, which is something I will visualize to you in just a moment. We would like to get another version uh, here. Okay, let me show to you which version, uh, what kind of version I'm, am I talking about? It's going to be an overloaded version, right? The same method name, but different list of parameters for the methods. And overloader version of the set products mutator, right? So the version we're going to define over here is an overloaded version of this uh, one that we got automatically generated. Okay, let me give you a little bit of uh, background over here. So this version of set products does not expect the user to create a product objects and has it as an object. So what do I mean? In order for me to call this set products uh, method, I'm the user, let's say I'm the user of this particular method. In order for me to call this method, what should I do? I need to pass the reference of a product object. That's what I need to do as a user. On the other hand, for this version I'm going to define right now, I do not want to put that obligation on the user of the, uh, the set products method. Let me show you right away. How can we do that? So I can say public, still public, and also mutator. So that's why it's, uh, that's why it's void. And set products, you can see the name over here is the same as this original method here. So that's why it's overloaded. And then the parameter here, since I chose the same name for the method, the parameters must be different. Okay, for example, if I simply say products and then I say P2, you might be arguing that while P2 is different from products. Nope, that doesn't count, right? Uh, the, the way that Java compiler works is by looking at the types of the uh, list of parameters. If the list matches, that would be an error. For example, you can see we got one parameter list of size one with just product type. And here we got the same parameter list of size one, also got products. So they are considered as the same, even though the names over here are the same, uh, are different, doesn't matter, right? The names are only for internal implementation for the method's purpose. It's not really, uh, it will not be taken into consideration in the overloading uh, checking. Okay, so what I would like to do now, rather than products over here, I'm going to give you two uh, pieces of data that the user of this method is gonna uh, need to pass. So I would say string model, and also double original price over here. So that means if I'm the user, okay, let me say it again. On the one hand, if I'm the user of this set products method, I need to pass this products objects reference. On the other hand, if I'm the user of the set, uh, this overloaded version of the set products method, instead of passing a products objects, I need to pass a model objects and, and the original price. However, the consequence should be, I should really set the products accordingly, but the behavior could be slightly different. That's also something I would like to illustrate to you in a moment when I do the issue like uh, the visualization. Okay, so this version does not expect the user to create a product objects and pass it as an argument. Instead, we would expect the user to pass a model, uh, a string model and a value of the original price, okay? And what's really important is internally, internally, in, uh, internal inside the method, it is expected that a local new products object is Created accordingly, right? I'm just trying to be as detailed as possible for your uh, for your explanation. So what do I mean? The simplest way 
to write this uh to write a definition for this uh, overloaded version oh let me just fix the typo very quickly if i may the simplest way is to say this dot products right something like that you can see this part over here this dot products is assigned to is identical to this dot product is assigned to the same in this version over here we can simply use products because product is of type products which matches the type for attribute products which is products right you can see the type actually matches but now i cannot do that for example i cannot say can i can i assign model to it i cannot because you can see if i uh, move my mouse over you can see products cannot be res uh oh did i spell it wrong like that okay sorry about the typo so here if i spot it correctly in that case this the product is assigned to model why would not uh, why would it not be uh, valid if you move your cursor over you would say type mismatch cannot convert from string to products meaning that this model is of type string which does not match the type of the attribute product which is of type product string is not products okay similarly i also cannot assign original price over here I also cannot do that for the similar reason because the types simply do not match between the targets and the source of the assignments. So what I should do instead is to create a local new objects using the new keyword. Whenever I want to create a new object, I need to use the new keyword in Java. So I'm going to say new and how do I create a new product? Well, call the constructor. And then guess what? If you go back to the product class, you can now recall there was the overloaded version of the constructor over there, which would take exactly just the model and also original price. In some way, it's not coincidence. I designed it that way. So it would be smooth for you to make uh, so to actually call this uh, constructor from another class, right? But I just want you to know that this uh, constructor here is exactly over here, right? It will be the version of the constructor being called here rather than the default version, right? Let me uh, close this and go back. Okay. So now if I do that, of course, you can see that uh, this will actually compile. Even if I call the default version over here, that will be okay. However, in some way, that's not logically correct because I'm wasting the information of model and also original price. If you want the user of this method to, to pass these two pieces of, inf uh, of information when they call the method, but you're not using them. In that case, why would you put them in the, as parameters in the first place? So there's a logical error here if I did it this way, right? So that's not good. So what I really meant to do instead is put to put model over here as the first arguments and also original price as the second arguments. That's really what I meant to do. Let me show you an alternative version very quickly. Let's, uh, by the way, so this use of the new keyword over here is so-called the anonymous objects because I'm really, well, the right-hand side of this particular variable assignment over here was expecting some products objects because this the product is of type products, right? Remember, that's a products over here. And rather than trying to create an object and then store its reference into a variable and then put that variable as the right-hand side in the variable assignment here, rather than doing that, I'm giving you the objects directly. So what I would do is Java will actually interpret this as create this objects and then get its address store into this uh, attribute over here. That's the interpretation. Okay, so that's this is so-called anonymous objects, which I also included in the uh, review slides. You can also review, but uh, it's something I will also use uh, throughout the, uh, maybe for for the later part of the tutorial series when I get to uh, uh, other parts. Okay, but. If you don't feel comfortable about this anonymous objects, meaning the object without a name, I can show you the equivalence. Slightly more um, wordy, uh, requiring more lines, but if that makes uh, makes it easier for you to understand, go with that way, okay? Let me just, oh, sorry, wrong way. Let me just uh, put this into comments. Instead, what you can do is, why don't we create a local products objects? Products, and then I can say P, and it will be a new products and based on the model and also original price over here right so that'll be model and also original price you can see this part over here is identical to this part over here the only difference is i'm now going to store 
the address of this newly created objects in your memory into the variable p. So p is going to store that reference. And after this, I'm actually going to say this the products is assigned to p. And let me give you a little bit look ahead for the next video. So this is already something that we call aliasing. Okay, aliasing means you actually got uh, actually uh, the uh, address of some objects copy over into multiple variables. That's basically what's happening. Okay, so think about what's happening here. I'll just describe very quickly uh, verbally, but we're gonna review the definition for aliasing and then give you more example. Think about what's happening over here. You have the new, you have a new single product object over here, and its address is stored into two places. So as long as it's more than one, we'll consider at we'll consider that as multiple places. One place is the p variable. The second place is this the products. So the same address has been copied into two variables, more than one p and also this the products. Visually, you are going to have p and this the products both pointing to the same memory region, the same box, the same objects. Okay, that's uh, if you can imagine that abstractly, then congratu uh, congratulations, you are doing very well. You can really do some abstract thinking. If uh, you're still a little bit struggling with this, that's okay. I'm gonna visualize it to you in a later video. All right, so these two ways, uh, both way work. You're, you're expected to know both ways, but when you actually program for yourself, either way works. The final method I would like to do for this current uh, class for products is the toString method, which we did actually for the entry class. Remember, we actually got this, uh, if, oh, sorry, for the product class. If I go by the product here, you can see the toString method that we declared before, right? You can see the toString method for products will actually uh, give you some string representation of the product's objects. We'll do the same reasoning and the same definition for uh, the entry uh, objects at the runtime. Let me close the products and let's now do that. So I would say public and then string to string, right? That's the standard definition for the to string. And it is currently complaining because we declare this method to return a string value, but in the body of the method, we are not returning anything. That's why, so don't worry, okay? So let me just uh, do a one line implementation, you can definitely split that into two lines by declaring some string variable, maybe initially, uh, it, it maybe initialized to be empty string, and then reassign that to some concatenation of string values and then return that, right? That's something I did in part one. I'm gonna leave that to you if you want to do some uh, extra exercise yourself. Let me do a one line implementation. I'm gonna say return, return, and then whatever I put return, what if I put in between return and the semicolon is going to be some string value. In this case, I'm going to use a concatenation uh, variable. Uh, sorry, I'm going to use a concatenation operator plus. However, we learned in part one for the two string method pro for the product class. You can also use a string builder or you can use a string that formats. If you want to try them out, feel free. But for now, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to use one. Let's say for every entry, I'm gonna have an opening square brackets plus and also some closing square brackets. That's the beginning and the end, right? Let's say. And then I'm actually going to use the uh, uh, square brackets to enclose the serial number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this the serial number over here, right? And question for you, is the use of this keyword here necessary? The answer should be no because this particular method has no parameter name that will clash with this uh, attribute name serial number. So that's why the, using, the use of this dot is not necessary, but I just like to put it there. It's a personal preference, it's up to you, okay? And let's say after we have enclosed a serial number to uniquely identify some entry or the products, now, how do we print out the information for the products? that's actually stored in this particular entry, right? I'm gonna visualize exactly what's gonna happen, but how would you put a definition here? Well, the easiest way is simply say this dot products, which is referring to the attributes over here, right? And what should be the string representation for the products? According to our earlier definition, every product should have this particular definition, right? It's gonna be, well, this is just one 
one way we did it. It's gonna contain the uh, model, the finish, the storage, uh, cellular connectivity or not, original price, and also discount value. So much information, right? Question is, do we need to copy and paste this definition back to the entry class, the to string method here? Do we need to? That's a question. Do we need to copy and paste? The answer is no. Remember the very definition for a method. It should be a reusable block of code. And please refer to that definition for method back to your classes and object slides. Whenever there's any way for you to call a method, you shouldn't really redefine the body of the method from scratch. You should you should simply reuse it. Okay. So what you should do instead is to say this the product start to string. As easy as that. Okay. That's uh, also something I hope uh, with your foundation, maybe from the first year, or at least from part one, uh, it's uh, enough for you to understand why I'm used simply calling this that products that to string rather than having to copy and pasting uh, this definition over here, which contains this uh, maybe contains the model of this that products and also finish uh, of this that products. As long as I'm calling the to string method, it's gonna happen automatically. That's something maybe I can illustrate quickly. Uh, to you uh, when I do the visualization. All right, so that's about the uh, entry class I would like to define. In the next video, I will start developing some test cases.